Hello, let's look at another problem uh, with equivalent systems. Um, this one says shaft A and B connect the gearbox to the wheel assemblies of a tractor. So these go B and A and B, they um, connect the gearbox to the wheel assembly. And shaft C connects, uh, connects it to the engine. Sure. The, uh, the power comes through shaft C to the gearbox and then get distributed to the two wheels. Shaft A and B lie in the vertical XY plane, which is fine, that doesn't, uh, these two, they're just in XY plane, uh, while shaft C is directed along the X axis. So that's just I. So this, this if I want to write it, is just 840I pound foot. Each of these has a um, J component and has a K component, a J com component and a K component, no I component. Okay, replace the couples applied to the shaft by a single equivalent couple, specifying its magnitude and direction of the axis. So get rid of these three and replace it by one, just one couple, but where? It doesn't tell you at what point. It doesn't matter because couple, moment of a couple is a free vector. Means the, the location of it is irrelevant. It doesn't have a location. Doesn't matter where you put it. It still has the same, um, same effect on the system. So that's why it doesn't specify to replace it where, at point A, point B, point C, anywhere. So you can just put it anywhere Again, the location of it is um, nothing to do in all of your your calculations. So, all you have to do is add these three vectors that you have together, and that will be your equivalent uh, equivalent couple. So let's let's get us started. Uh, one thing I like to do is, you know, they they give you rotation. Let's why not just having as a as a vector. So let's let's see positive x positive y, positive z. Um, if you use the right hand rule, starting with point A, I'll have, I have a try to try draw, draw a hand. I don't know if you remember right hand rule. If you curl your fingers in the direction that's showing, your thumb is pointing to the direction of the moment. So this is your right hand and you are curling your fingers same direction as this rotation that's given. Your thumb is pointing to the direction of uh, the vector. So in this case, it's pointing this way. It doesn't matter where you draw it. Remember, uh, vector is a sliding. This is a uh, kind of a sliding vector. So you can draw it here. Doesn't make a difference because it has the same magnitude, has same direction. You can draw it back there. Same thing. So you can put it anywhere in this line. As long as the magnitude and direction is correct, you are, uh, you are correct. So that's point A. Uh, same thing. Right hand rule for B. Right hand rule for B. And that also has there, okay, that has 20 degrees here, 20 degrees there. It's only on X and, uh, sorry, Z and Y, there's no X on it. And then right hand rule for point C, your thumb is going to point to this direction. Okay, so these are the three vectors you have. So we got to find the components because the equivalent couple that it wants from us is summation of all three couples plus summation of R, R cross F's, all the forces. I don't see any forces anywhere on this problem. No forces. So this whole thing is zero. All you have to do is add the free couples that exist here. So, M A 
plus MB plus MC, and that's all you got to do. MA is really easy. It's given. It's a vector with a magnitude of 840, 840 with the direction of negative I. All you need is a magnitude, direction, you got that one. Oh, sorry, MC, uh, this is C, point C. Not A, I'm sorry. Point A, let's look at it. It's only on Y and Z. I'm going to redraw it here. This is plus Y, minus Y, plus Z, minus Z. You have a vector that is, uh, how much is it? 1,200 pound foot, 20 degrees. So your uh, X component is zero. There's no X. Your Y component is right here. And that's negative. It's because it's pointing to negative Y. It's minus 1,200 sine of 20 degrees J your Z component is pointing to plus Z and that is 1200 cosine 20 in the K direction pound foot sorry it's a little bit a uh, little bit messy MC done MA done MB all we have to do is M um, MB Could re redraw it here plus y minus y plus z minus z and b is going down oh I'm sorry pointing up here with 20 degrees so there is no x uh, the y component is pointing up this one so it's plus magnitude is 900 900 and that is cosine 20, uh, sorry, sine 20. So let me write it here. 0i, 900 sine 20, j. And z component is right there. That's 900 cosine 20, cosine 20, k, the units of pound feet. All right. So, adding the all of these together is adding all the i's together. Two of them are two of them are zero. So all I have is minus eight hundred and forty i. Adding all the j's together, I'm going to get minus one hundred two point six j. Adding all the k's together, I have 197335 k. The units are pound foot. So this is my equivalent moment that the problem was asking me to find. But it also said find the direction of it. Okay. From 3d vector components again i have a lecture on this you can go back and watch it this is magnitude of m cosine alpha this here is magnitude of m cosine beta this is magnitude of m cosine gamma some books might call it theta x theta theta y theta z some books will call it alpha beta gamma these are coordinate direction angles. Okay, so all I have to do is find a magnitude, then I can find cosine alpha, cosine beta, cosine gamma, and that defines the direction of this vector. Magnitude of M is just a square root of each of the components squared, minus 840 minus 102.6 squared, 1973.35 squared, 
and if you do the math you should get 2147.3 pound foot okay so I'll do the first one you can do the beta and gamma so 2147.3 pound foot is that's magnitude cosine alpha is minus 140 pound foot so therefore cosine alpha equals minus 180 pound foot 2147.3 pound foot from here you get alpha equals 113 113 degrees you do the same for beta and gamma your beta is going to be 92.7 degrees and gamma is going to be 23.2.2 uh, degrees so these are the the angles that the vector makes with each of the axes so if you remember Okay, so your vector needs to have 113 degrees with X, um, 92 with B, with Y, sorry, and uh, 23 with, with uh, Z. So it's kind of going to be right there. This is going to be your R. So it's kind of have 113 degrees. 92 and a 23 that's your gamma that's your beta and this is your uh, your alpha the I I'm just checking quickly your I was negative so that's kind of makes sense um, your J was negative so this also should go down 92 that makes sense it's below x and y so your components your y this is 102 your i is minus 8 840 and your uh, z is 1973 so these are the three components as well so remember it was 840i negative 102 j and 1973 Okay, so just to kind of visualize a little bit better, I'm sure if you uh, pick a grid paper, uh, you can draw much better scale that makes makes sense. But I just kind of want to put it on a uh, context of what what these angles uh, mean. Thank you very much.